Hello there and welcome to another episode of Coding in AL and today we are going to look at how we can be able to use the job queues to send statements or automate tasks in the system and what is the best way that we should do our automation in terms of what are the coding patterns that are advisable for us to make sure that out our automation runs uh, runs seamlessly without any issues okay i'm just using a simple example of a customer and i'm trying to send an email to uh, that is a customer statement the default statement um, so what what has been defined here is uh, the report first which is a processing only report and then I have filtered to this particular customer number, a specific customer, just to avoid having to loop through many customers. And then so in the email, you do have an email message code unit that will help you in the creation um, and managing of email messages. And then we do have another email code unit that will help us to send and uh, create emails. So we will create the message using this email message and send it using the email code unit. This will be the subject and this is the body. This is the mail management code unit, which has got functions that like this one is a function with the try function attribute, uh, that uh, procedure with the try function attribute that will check for a valid email address. and. For all try uh, methods with the try function attribute, if you have handled with an if, similar to the get, if the, uh, the method has been handled, that there's a return value for this method, it won't throw an error. But if you don't handle this, then it will throw an error. So actually, basically, when you are having code that runs automatically, the use of the try function is the key most of the time uh, unless the code is committing maybe posting or creating new entries uh, if it's for validation then the try function is everything for us here and you find that most of the time this code will most of the time that the challenges we face is because of validation and we can use lazy loading like here i'm saying consent email so here i can put conditions of many things for this particular customer uh for this try function so if it's a try function i can throw errors here without uh, uh having a problem so you can say if cast.name is blank uh then uh, error maybe enter the customer name or the customer does not have a name uh, we could do the same for the balance for this particular customer however when we look at this uh, example here since we have handled it with the can send email to the customer then if it throws an error uh, okay, if the, there is no error, then it will be true and it will run to the next function. But if there is an error, then it won't even proceed to any other new function. But you find uh, if there is an error, it won't run, but the job queue won't run into the error status. It will remain uh, ready all through. And if it's a web service call, it won't run into an error status and uh, maybe prevent other customers from running it will proceed on running to the next and to the next and to the next and so here this mail management is also having the try function attribute and it checks for a valid email and if the email isn't valid then it throws an error but as long as we have handled it with the if it means then we can use it and create our own error or we have like used it here to make sure that this email that this customer is using is valid because the source of the customer could be a creation from a different external app that has not validated the email correctly. So mm, our validation uh, can be done from this side. Okay, you can't do a validation for everything because at times maybe if it's, it's a connection issue, 
you better run into an era with that job queue and know that yes there's a connection issue so something like email dot send email and uh, uh, something like this should not probably be added to a try function to prevent uh, uh, the real problems if we have a problem with connection we should know that <coughs> the email dot create here will create the uh, message with the subject the body and say that it is html formatted as i have set it here then we will be able to uh, get the record for the purpose of saving us and filtering to a particular customer we would like to have this customer list only filtered to this specific customer that's why we have used the get table to the record ref and uh, it gets the table of a record variable and causes the record ref to refer to the same table. So the record ref will be referring to this particular record that we have uh, got in the on after get record of the customer list. And then we will save it to the outstream after initializing the outstream to the temp blob. And then we will now uh, copy the stream from outstream to the in-stream. And then send this as an attachment using email.send. But we have made sure that the email is okay and the customer is valid. So my customer, let's try and send uh, with a job queue. So I'll build and run with debugging. So when I've run it, uh, I can go to job queue entries and create a new job queue. Uh, call it 5100. I can have my automation category. This is a category that I've created. So if you don't find it in your system, you can create a category. This is to enable us to categorize our job queues and uh, know which category they belong to. Okay, okay. So the maximum number of attempts, I'd like it to try at least uh, two or five times. Say five times. If there is an error, it will try five times and then rerun delay in seconds. Maybe if there is a delay in rerun for this particular, specifies how many seconds to wait before rerunning this job queue task in the event of a failure. So if there is a failure here, what uh, after how many seconds? should it try the rerun delays for these five times here yeah? then uh we can just leave this earlier start time for now then uh, our report is a processing only so i'll leave this there then i will now repeat the job queue every day of the week because the consent will determine if it's the right day or but this is a setting that is usually done every day unless you are trying to send a message every sunday then you can have only sunday selected and uh, here i can say maybe the number of minutes between run is two this one will be automatically populated uh since after this job queue has run the starting time Okay, okay. Uh, this is for recurring job queue. So anything that is here is about recurrence. What What is the expected next run date time and the expected ending date, which is uh, the latest time of the day that the recurring job entry is to be run for that particular uh, uh, time or that particular day. So once I've done this, I can just... There are many options here. Set on hold. At the moment, it's already on hold when you create a job, a job queue entry. So you can set it, set it uh, change the status to ready, uh, restart it, run in foreground, or show error. So I'll set the status to ready, and it will pick this 11.47 p.m. as the time that the job queue is supposed to run. So when I go to log entries, it will show me that it has run successfully but the question is has it really sent an email because in the customers that we have been running the customer here known as the cast does have uh, 
doesn't have an email and there's a point where we specify that if the name is not available for the customer then don't run or don't send an email to this particular customer okay and if the email is valid also invalid i mean don't even send an email but if i look at this job queue it ran so fast to mean that this could be an error or a problem because it ran too fast like you see successful within how long did it take to run it usually shows time i don't know why this log entry is not having what i want okay close that pop up so in in 200 milliseconds that's too fast uh, for sending an email in my docker container so let's try and see the next uh around it it should be 11:49. apparently it hasn't populated here next round it formula oh okay this is supposed to be a formula okay this is the one that is just the next date the next run date formula specifies the date formula that is used to calculate the next time the recurring job queue entry will run if you use a date formula all other recurring settings are cleared okay you could use a date formula maybe one month plus three days and it will run using this formula instead of running in on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and the like Okay, we, we expect it to run again at, uh, it should have run another log entry for this particular job queue. And uh, it's still successful. Let's look at the time. So this one looks like it has sent an email because the time is now clear. It's eight seconds, though this is slow for the system. But it has done the sending of the email successfully. And you can see this job queue didn't stop. And what's the risk here? If you haven't logged, if you didn't get the error, imagine you could see that this is a success. He, the customer hasn't received the email, but you find your job queue is having a success. So ideally, add maybe a functionality of having it logged uh, on your side, maybe a log for saying the, the uh, email has been sent or the email has not been sent and you'll be able to now track and see if the job queue is really really running or there is a problem with these particular job queues so if you're running your uh, business central in a docker container uh, the job queue could not work uh, because of not having this enable task scheduler either selected or not then the job queue can fail to run if you haven't uh, if this property is not well well uh, selected or if this property is not uh, set to true, this configuration, the BC con uh, container server configuration should uh, have this particular enable task scheduler to be true to enable you to run uh, the job queues in your Docker container. So that's it for this video. That's how we can be able to send uh, or how to use job queues and more so the try function to try and make sure that we eliminate errors earlier or lazy loading but with a keenness to make sure that we can be able to log those errors in case of anything so i wish you all the best and i'll see you in the next video may god bless you if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.